So I'm going to start putting these wheels on. And so I just got my wheel order, which took quite a while. And uh, this is a Matco WHL W600, which by specification, it's a six inch wheel and uh, has plenty of braking power. So I'm going to go ahead and start installing this. All right, so I'm just removing these Torx screws so I can get the disc off. And I need to set up and figure out this bolt pattern because I can't find a drawing that shows what the bolt pattern is, which you'd think would be easy to find, but it's not a big deal. I'll be able to determine it pretty quick. So looks like I just need to take these two screws out and that will separate the caliper from this uh, um, mounting disc. So I looked at the print for a little more time and they do call out a bolt circle on this print for the mounting holes of two inches and 25 th and uh, two and a quarter inches. Um, they don't call out the angle. It looks to be a six bolt pattern with only four bolts in the pattern. I'll be able to verify that. And then I've checked it against the Bearhawk print. So the wheel disc or the wheel plate adapter plate they show I think is like uh, two inches eight seven five, and it looks like that'll work fine to uh, to mount to here. So I will verify this angle, and then I will make a couple round discs that will get welded on the uh, the adapter that also sits and um, acts as the stop for the inner race on the on the hub. Alright, so I have a center hole and I bolted the two plates together. And I'm going to put the bolt pattern in there, which is a two and a quarter inch circle, quarter inch holes, 60 degrees apart. There's six in the circle. So I'll put all six in there, even though we'll only use four. It just make it more universal. And I have a bolt centers on the mill, so I can just use that to uh, do a circle of bolts, but you could just as easily lay it out and drill the drill press would be good enough. All right, I put one more bolt in here after I put my bolt pattern in. That's so these two plates won't rotate, move, or anything. And I'm going to go and sand the sides on the belt sander so that they're even because they're, they're off a little bit and that will uh, make it so that I can chuck this up in the lathe pretty use pretty easily Get ready to put the uh, caliper adapter that holds the uh, the brake disc um, on the axle. And so, to do that, one of the first things I did is I welded this on this side. And really, it's supposed to be welded on this side. It doesn't really matter to me if you weld it on this side. Then I have a little bit of a length problem. You'll be up into that weld, so you'll have problems with that. All I did was put a fillet on the adapter plate so that that weld does not interfere with it sitting flush against there. So that was the first thing I did. The next thing is I want to get it all the way down here and I want the rotation to be the same as the one I already did. So thing I'm using to set this up, there's, there's four bolts in that adapter plate, is right here where the, where the uh, bolt comes through, making sure there's enough clearance to get a nut on. So I'm rotating it far enough over that I can get a nut on there, and then I have four bolts that I can get in to the uh, plate and get to. That'll work well too, because then the port will be pretty vertical on the, on the, uh, on the landing gear legs here. And this 
is the front tube, so this is in the front part of the axle. Long and short, I got it where I want it. I'm going to tack this thing in place and then finish the rest of the setup. Okay, so I've, I've done my welds on the uh, mount here for the disc, and I'm going to assemble this. So one thing, I think I mentioned it was about an inch and five-eighths for the length of this collar per the print. Well, I actually messed that up because that doesn't get you to the right side of the face. So I had to add in the thickness of the disc, so I made a spacer for it, which can just go on like that. So that makes the actual length that would have worked perfectly two inches. I also drilled the uh, cotter pin hole in the end down here so that the nut can be put it on the right way here. So I'm just putting in the four bolts that hold the uh, caliper mount here to the axle. And I'm not worried about the fork or anything because they all have to come out to paint this. So it's really just uh, being assembled for uh, so I can push it around the shop. So with that done, I'm going to put the wheel together. All right, I'm going to put this inner tube into the tire and then I'm going to pull it in through the hole in the rim and I'm going to set this in I'm going to push the inner tube down so that it's not sticking over the rim anywhere. Put washers on it. Nuts. bring the axle over. So we got a spacer, we need a bearing. Not lubing the bearings either because I don't want to deal with grease when I have to paint all this. Let's put this on. It works better if the needle valve is out. Or valve stem I should say. I made a washer for this because so Mr. Matco wants you to these are sealed tapered roller bearings but they want so they want to make sure you tighten this up enough that that seal doesn't spin and the nuts I bought don't have a flange sometimes these have a flange on them so anyhow it needs a washer really to pinch the seal properly and not distort it Now I can take this nut down. And then what they want is you to turn it until when you turn the tire, the steel the seal stays in place. So the seal is spinning right now. Still spinning. There it goes. All right, so now the seal isn't spinning. We've got to take it to the next hole. At least that's what I'm doing. Right there. Our cotter pin will fit now. Just 
going to give it a slight bend. There we go. That'll keep it in there. Yep. We'll turn this over. So now we just need to attach the disc to the rim. And that is three little screws with a Torx head. Okay. Shouldn't have been that hard, but there they are. that I put the 3 8 spacer that it should have been 2 inch overall when that's all set up correctly according to Mr. Matko if you look in the manual there should be a gap here between the caliper and the face of between let's see what the number is 50 to 125 thousandths so I have 125 thousandths piece of tool steel and it just doesn't make it in there so we're definitely in that range and uh, that basically just means that caliper is in the right position and can float as the pads wear. So the nut's in a good place. Everything's on there. So it's ready to go on the plane. Four pounds, that should be plenty for running around the garage. After installing the wheels and the brakes, that's it for landing gear for now. 